Kimmer Hashiv, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a simple trick you can use to create your own fantastic color schemes. Be sure to stay to the end and I'll show you an example of how to put it into practice on an actual miniature. When trying to come up with color schemes, it's very tempting to mindlessly just grab paints off your shelf in the vain hope that things will just magically start to work. After all, you have all these paints at your disposal, it would be a shame not to use them. A better approach is to try and keep things simple, scaling down the amount of paints that you use. Limit yourself to no more than four. Now that might sound unworkable, but we'll be using a neat colour theory trick to both help us choose the colours and make sure they actually work as a scheme. If you look at this simple colour wheel, notice we can draw a line down the middle, effectively splitting it into two halves. Now on the right we have magenta through to yellow, these are our warm colours, and on the left we have green through to violet, and these are our cold colours. To create our palette, what we're going to do is simply select two basic colours, one warm and one cold. So these could be any colour combo that you want, as long as one is from this half of the wheel and one is from the other half over here. For example, you could have yellow and blue, or red and purple, maybe green and orange. If you like, you can select complementary colours. So these are colours which sit directly opposite each other on the wheel. For example, orange sits opposite to blue, violet is opposite to yellow, red is opposite to green, and so on. Using complementary hues allows you to maximise your contrast. In the same way that white is the opposite to black, complementary colours can be thought of in a similar way. So if we look at the colour wheel again, you see that orange is the opposite of blue, red is the opposite of green, and so on. As well as giving you a high level of contrast, you can also mix them together to create a brown or a grey. But not only that, you can also create slightly desaturated versions of each colour. And this can all be achieved by changing how much paint you mix into the other. I can actually recommend just putting two complementary colours on your palette and experimenting to see how many different tones that you can create. I think you'll be surprised by the results. Once you have your two colours picked out, you're going to need something that allows you to lighten them. You could just use white for this, but as your palette is so limited, I'd recommend using an off-white instead. So this is just a very light paint that has a hint of colour in it. Examples are Vallejo Ivory or Scale Colour Pale Skin. So these are going to allow you to create your highlights, but also widen the potential colours that you can create. I find using an off-white for your highlights generally gives you a more interesting result than if you just used white on its own. Now your shadows can be made by simply mixing your two main colours together. However, if you don't like that effect, you can make a concession and add some black to your palette and just use that to darken your colours instead. For the last colour, I recommend using a brown tone. You can use this to create skin tones to desaturate a more vivid colour, or to fill in extra little details on the model, like leather belts or shoes, for example. You could simply use a standard premixed flesh colour for this, or you could opt for a darker brown. A darker colour is going to give you more flexibility, as you'll be able to lighten it with your off-white to get a larger range of brown tones. Alright, so to reiterate, all you need is a cool colour, a warm colour, an off-white, and a brown tone. Note that if your two main paints are complementary, you can actually leave out the brown, as you're going to be able to make one simply by mixing the two complementary colours together. But you can always take one anyway if you're feeling lazy. So now you know the basic idea, we'll look at an example of how this can be applied on a model. So for this one here, I used Chimera Magenta, Chimera Thalo Blue, Games Workshop Talon Flesh, and Scale Color Pale Skin. So again, you can see that we have a cold color, a warm color, a brown, and an off-white. For the skin, we first created our mid-tone by mixing some of the magenta into the Talon Flesh, giving it some warmth. 
Then we created a shadow color by mixing in some of the blue. Highlights were made by mixing progressive amounts of the pale skin into the mid-tone. The hair was done by first creating a dark violet color, mixing the blue and magenta together. Highlights were then built up by using the blue as a mid-tone and then some of the pale skin to lighten it. For the shirt I made a light pink, mixing some of the magenta into the pale skin, then making a shadow by adding a little blue. Highlights were done by mixing the pale skin into our light pink mid-tone. Last but not least, on the dress we again made a dark violet for our shadows by mixing the blue and magenta. Then to get the mid-tone we added a little more magenta into the shadow and then we lightened it slightly with pale skin to get this nice purple tone. Highlights were then made by mixing the pale skin into the purple. So you can see that even though we're only using four paints, we're still able to get some pretty interesting results. By reducing the number of paints that you use, it helps to get a more harmonious result. And it's also going to help you get a more solid understanding of colours, as you're going to be forced to do a lot more mixing than you might have otherwise. A restricted palette is going to ensure that there will be relationships between your colours and nothing is going to appear jarring or out of place as your eyes are going to be seeing the same mix of paints throughout just in different ratios. This helps to reduce odd colour clashes and tends to make the model more readable as the details aren't going to end up swamped in a big mess of colour. Alright guys, so I hope that gives you some ideas for making your own paint schemes. There's many different ways to go about it, this is just one of my favourites as it's so simple. Have fun with it and let me know how you get on in the comments below. Okay, I'm going now. Bye!